So we're finished with the chapter on derivatives, and at this point, we know how to take the derivative of pretty much any function that somebody might throw at us, right? So uh, as far as the mechanics of computing derivatives, we're, we're pretty much on top of that, right? We've got our product rule, our quotient rule, our chain rule. We know how to deal with implicitly defined functions, inverse functions. Um, we're, we're pretty much derivative machines at this point. Um, but we also want to know something about what you can do with derivatives, right? We have some vague notion that derivatives have something to do with tangent lines, with velocity, um, but we need to explore this a little bit further. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at derivatives in this context of graphs of functions, right? So the, the graphical behavior of functions. What does the derivative tell us about how a function behaves, what, it graph, what its graph looks like? Um, and it turns out derivatives have a lot to say about this, okay? So we're going to start here with this idea of extreme values, okay? Um, and we're going to talk about both absolute and relative extreme values, or if you like, global versus local extreme values. Um, we'll start with absolute. Uh, so absolute extreme values, these are just the biggest or smallest values that a function attains on its domain, okay? So you have some function f, it's defined on some domain d, and c is some point, so we should be careful here and, and make sure we point out that c here, c is in that domain. C is in D, okay? So C is some element of the domain, and this value M is a Y value, right? So C is an input, M is an output. When we talk about the absolute maximum value, we're referring to M, right? But it does have to actually be realized by some element in the domain, right? So this has to be a value that's actually attained by the function, okay? So we say it's the absolute maximum value if the output that we get from f of c, right, so here's our m, if it's bigger than or equal to every other output on the domain, right? So it's the biggest possible output that we can get from our function over all possible inputs. That's the absolute maximum, okay? And if we wanted to turn this around and say minimum, all right? So if we had, say, m equal to f of c, well, that should be now less than or equal to f of x, right? We just turn around the inequality. Okay. So this is the notion of absolute maximum, absolute minimum. So if we have the graph of some function, and perhaps it looks something like this, Okay, there's a graph, looks reasonable. So the domain is going to be from here out to here, let's say there's our domain, right? And so over all possible x values on the domain, we kind of, you know, run things up and down. We say, what's the biggest y value that we get? We say, okay, so the biggest we get is up here, right? There's our m. What's the smallest? It's down here. Right? There's our little m, right? And, and each one does occur for some x value that's in the domain, right? So big, little m, big m, these are y values, but they come from plugging x values into the function, right? They're the outputs for a given input. Um, now, one thing to be careful of, you're not, these, you're not guaranteed existence of these values, right? It could happen, right? We could have something like, well, here's, here's a function that you're familiar with, right? Simple reciprocal function. Y equals one over X, right? Doesn't have a maximum value because this is gonna go off to plus infinity, right? It's unbounded. So, so the closer you get to zero from the right, the bigger the y value gets. So you never reach a point where you say, oh, this is the biggest y value, because you can always get bigger and bigger y values by getting x closer and closer to zero, right? Similarly, we can get large negative values, so there's no minimum, okay? Now, but it, it, maybe it doesn't happen just because you have an asymptote. You could also have something like, you could have something like this. You could have a graph that perhaps 
um, goes up, and then there's a hole in the domain, right? So it's undefined there. And maybe it resumes down here. And maybe there's another gap. And we have something like that, right? So again, you know, we have we have these values here, which are which are bounds for our function, right? So there's there's sort of a y value here that's bigger than all possible y values for our function. There's one down here that's smaller than all possible y values for our function, but they're not actually attained by the function, right? We can't say that those values are given by f of c for some c in the domain, um, right? So we never actually reach that value, right? We get closer and closer and closer to that y value, but we never actually get there. So these are situations where we would not say that there is a maximum or a minimum, right? So we might have them, we might not. Um, one of the things that we want to know is we'd like to know what are some reasonable conditions under which we can be guaranteed the existence of these extreme values. Once we know that they exist, then it makes sense to go looking for them.